Welcome, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. This is going to be part two of Trump versus Antifa. Get your King James Bible and let's go to... 1 John chapter 2, and I guess we'll start in verse number 20. Now, in the last number, uh, part one, I was going to give you the Bible definition of an antichrist, but I hit the wrong button, and it saved. Instead of pausing, it saved it, and so I figured I would just do a part two. Uh, I'm a, I don't know, in some things I'm pretty competent technology-wise, and in other ways I'm kind of old school, so please bear with me. Uh, let's see, verse, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. So who's a liar? Anyone that denies that Jesus is the Christ. Christ is just the Greek rendering of the word Messiah. So who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ he is Antichrist. Now, this is not Bob's definition. This is the Bible definition. And if you don't know it, Jesus um, had John's head on his chest during the Last Supper. He was called the Beloved Apostle. Okay? Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So, in a nutshell, if you deny the Son, you're also denying the Father that sent his only begotten Son. And you're an antichrist. And, you know, when the Jews go to their wailing wall, Jesus was asked in Matthew 24 what would be the sign of the ends and, and of his coming. I'm paraphrasing. And they, they showed him the temple, and he said, you know, there's not going to be one stone left upon another that shall not be thrown down and maybe should we read it i guess we could right you know so basically what they're doing is when the jews are basically calling jesus a liar when they're at the wailing wall calling that you know part of the temple Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. So here it is. Jesus is leaving the temple. And the disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And guess what? In 70 AD, that was fulfilled. The Roman army came. They destroyed the temple. They burned it. Now, obviously, the stones didn't burn, but there was an awful lot of gold in the temple. And the heat was so great, according to legend and history, that it melted. And, of course, if there's a crease in between two stones, the, the gold's going to melt in between the two of them, right? So, according 
to history, the Roman soldiers took every stone and threw them down and scraped the gold from the stone. Matter of fact, their commander, uh, the General Titus, ordered them not to destroy the temple. Don't burn it down. Don't destroy it. But they did anyways because, hey, they got to take all the gold. So this Jesus is not a liar. You know, the stones were all thrown down. Every single one of them. The Roman soldiers took their swords and scraped every scrap of gold. And trust me, there was a lot of gold. A lot of gold in that temple. So, when they go to the Wailing Wall, and they put on their little beanie cap, and they pray, and they thrust their hips back and forth, take a guess what they're doing, with uh, Lilith or Shekinah, if you know what I'm talking about, they're denying Jesus. And uh, I got, you know, you take pictures of Trump at the Wailing Wall with the rabbis, and yet he says he's a Christian. Well, guess what? His daughter's married to a Jew. She converted to Judaism. And then when she's before Christians, she tells everybody she's a Christian. When she's in front of a group of Jews, she says she's a Jew. Uh, you know, whatever. I, I don't. Uh, I don't get it. But well, I do get it. So what's the? Uh, you know, the the Jews are not the only ones that wear those little round beanie caps. What do they call them? Uh, yarmulkes or whatever. In the Book of Leviticus. Now, for those of you that don't know, Leviticus was the book on the instructions for the tribe of Levi. And that's why it's called Leviticus, because the, the, they were the Levites. Um, they were the tribe that was consecrated, set apart, sanctified to serve God in his tabernacle. Whereas the tribe of Judah was to be the ruling tribe. Sort of a uh, checks and balances, division of powers, I guess you could say. You know, King David was to be the king and rule Israel, whereas the Levites, the high priests, they were to serve the God in the temple. They were the ones doing the animal sacrifices. So, you know, King David couldn't go into the temple, into the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement. If he did, God would have killed him, dead. Trust me on that. King David knew better than that. Only the high priest... And he better have blood. Only the high priest could go into the Holy and Holies on the Day of Atonement and offer a blood sacrifice to the Lord. And, of course, that's why Christ came. John said, Behold the Lamb of God that cometh, that taketh away the sin of the world. So, all right, so Jews and Catholics wear those little round caps on their head. In Leviticus 19, verse 27, it says, Ye shall not, ye shall not round the corners of your heads. Round the corners of your heads? You know, during the Middle Ages, wasn't there a, uh, a bunch of monks that used to cut their hair in like a donut. I uh, forget what they were. Maybe they were Dominicans or I don't know. But it says, Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Huh. So why are they wearing a, a round beanie cap? Are they in violation of this? I don't know. So, Is Donald Trump going to be Make America Great Again? Well, in Psalms 118 and verse 8, I believe this is King David, I'm not sure. It is written that it is better to trust in the Lord. 
It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. You know, I remember the election of 1979. We had um, Jimmy Carter running. And I'll admit, I voted for Jimmy Carter. I heard, yeah, he was a farmer and he was a, uh, a submarine, nuclear submarine commander. You know, unless you're related to somebody really high up in, in government or whatever, uh, usually you don't get to be in that level of responsibility being a dummy. It just usually doesn't happen. Unless, of course, you know, you're, you're like one of the general's children or grandchildren, like uh, John McCain. Uh, John McCain is was related directly to somebody very high up that uh, was uh, in the Pacific War against Japan. Supposedly, he was one of the masterminds in the Battle of Midway. I don't know how true that is. That could have just been media hype. But uh, McCain, uh, he's not one of my favorite politicians. Then again, I don't uh, like it. It's, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. You know, what's sad about Trump is during his campaign trail, he made a bunch of comments that, well, you know, Hillary's in bed with, liter well, figuratively or literally, I don't know, Hillary was in bed with Goldman Sachs, you know, the Wall Street banking firm that's very kosher. So Trump says all the things that we wanted to hear. He gets elected. Who does he appoint? I believe it was Treasury Secretary. Somebody from Goldman Sachs. What can I tell you? You know, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And you know, everybody thought, well, good, we're getting rid of that Muslim Obama. Did you know that Michelle, or is it Michael Obama? Or is it Michelle? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's a tranny or, or if it was born a female or transgendered. I, I don't know. But Michelle, as she's, it, it is widely known, her, uh, its cousin is head of the black rabbis in Chicago. Isn't that interesting? Obama's half-brother is a black Jew living in the Israeli state. Huh, and yet he's supposed to be a Muslim? Really? Hmm. So... It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Now, let's go back to 1 John chapter 3. Now, I have an, on my YouTube channel, I have a group of playlists. And if you're really interested, you can take a look at the, uh, the Sons of God and most Christians are not willing to spend time studying, not just reading, studying the Bible. You know, it's just amazing. Most people have no clue that the largest publisher of Bibles in the world, which is Zondervan, in the English language anyways, Zondervan's the largest publisher of Bibles in the English language in the world. Their parent company is HarperCollins. HarperCollins prints gay porn. HarperCollins prints a how-to book called The Joy of Gay Sex by a author called Silver, Silver, Silverstein, Silverberg, I forget. Nice Jewish boy, right? They also print the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan. And, uh, you know... Chelsea wish the Church of Satan a uh, Happy New Year on Twitter. Isn't that wonderful? I read a 
thing uh, in the news where she said that we should have respect for the Church of Satan. And oh, by the way, uh, they were the Church of Satan was founded by a guy named Anton Levy. Levy. Levy? Is it Levy? I don't know. Jewish guy. Uh, he changed his name to LeVay. I guess they didn't want you to know who or what they are. Of course, they say, well, we we don't really believe in the devil. I just create a church in his honor because I don't believe in the devil, but just man's carnal nature. That's their that's their PR thing. So, what can I tell you? All right, First John chapter three, verse one. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Now, in the New Testament, when we're born again of the Spirit, we're called the son. We we are adopted into being sons of God. But if you read Job thirty-eight. It said the sons of God shouted for joy when the earth was created. Okay, so the sons of God existed while the earth was being created. Adam, who was also called a son of God, he didn't exist until six days after the earth was created. And of course, Jesus is called the only begotten son of God. So how could Adam's children be sons of God shouting for joy before they were born? Unless, of course, the sons of God in the Old Testament were angels. Like I say, take a look at my playlist. It's probably 12, 15, 20 hours. I don't know. It's, it's an in-depth study. When you get done, uh, you'll know what happened in Genesis 6 when the sons of God married the daughters of men, and they had giants for children uh, before the flood and after the flood. Who do you think da King, uh, future King David faced when he took his sling and put a stone in the forehead of Goliath? And they had six fingers and six toes, and they got people today with six fingers and six toes. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Amen to that. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Behold now are we the sons of God. Now, not back then. Now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear that we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You see, when we are called up into the sky to meet Christ in the air, we're going to be changed. Matter of fact, let's take a look at that. All right, let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, let's see, starting in verse 11. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business. Yeah, mind your own business. Not Don't be a busybody with other people's business. I tell you what, I don't need to worry about other people's problems. I got enough of my own. You know, the devil likes to throw me a curveball. For those of you that are baseball fans, you'll understand. But uh, I'm not a ball fan anymore. But uh, And that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. So much for collecting welfare, right? That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. But I would not have you to be ignorant. What does it mean to be ignorant? It means you don't know something. You know, when it comes to brain surgery, I'm ignorant. I don't know nothing about brain surgery. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Dead, right? Concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. 
You see, there's a verse in the Bible, I probably couldn't find it if I wanted to, but uh, I'm going to paraphrase it. It basically says, show sorrow when somebody's born and rejoice when somebody that's in the Lord, rejoice when they die. Because the person that died in, in faith, well, their problems are over. And the person that's, you know, the baby that's being born, well, their problems are just starting, right? But, uh, but those that are not in faith, well, <laughs> concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. See, those that are without, with no faith, they have no hope. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, amen to that, I do. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, if you're alive when Christ comes, you're not going to be able to stop him coming with all the those that died in times past. Christ is going to be bringing John, Paul, Peter, Andrew, Jude, James, all of them, all the apostles, all the Old Testament saints, all the prophets, all of them, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of them, Samson, all of them, they're coming, and you and me, we ain't going to stop them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Yeah, that sounds like a secret rapture to me, doesn't it? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout for the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Sorry, that's not Donald. Uh, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Just remember, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Let me explain something to you here. Very important. Very important. Remember this. If you're here on this earth, and there's some supernatural guy doing miracles. And I'm not talking about that junk on TBN with Benny Hinn and, and Kenneth Copeland and Hagen and Kenya, all those, you know. I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about the uh, somebody that, you know, like the, the false prophet that's able to bring fire down from the sky and destroy his enemies. I mean, an army comes against him with tanks and planes and fire comes from the sky and just, just wipes the tanks off the face of the earth. If you see something like that, it's the wrong Messiah. Why? Because Paul says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. If there's a Messiah that comes and you don't meet him in the air... It's the wrong Messiah. It's the Antichrist, not the Christ. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. All right, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <clears throat> I guess we'll start in verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Boy, I know that well in high school. I used to hang out with some bad crowd. Got in a lot of trouble. 
Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Doesn't that sound like the atheists? Verse 36, Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. You know, when you plant a seed in the ground, the seed is destroyed, and yet a plant comes up. Verse 37, And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain. So the seed is destroyed, but the plant grows up, you know. And, and that's basically, our bodies are like a seed, but when Christ comes, the seed is going to die, but the plant is going to live. Verse 38, But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Uh, you ever heard the word terrain? It has reference to earth. So celestial is the heavenly and terrestrial is the earthly. So uh, verse 40, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. I was a member of the meteorological society in Miami. We were called the Southern Cross Society, uh, part of the Miami Museum of Science and Space Planetarium when I was in elementary school. They had a very nice uh, telescope on top of the uh, museum where you could look at the moon and the stars. And little did I know, you know, I was in elementary school. I, I was like, I think sixth grade and uh, used to hang out with all the teenagers. I was the youngest one. And I didn't know it then, but uh, they were all getting high on weed up, you know, here it is, they're, they're in a, on top of a locked museum on the weekends at night, uh, you know, checking out the stars and we were checking out meteor showers and checking out the moon and the stars and they're getting high, you know, pretty hard to get, uh, busted for weed when you're on top of a two or three story building uh that's locked that you know but uh yeah i didn't know what was going on but but it was kind of neat though i was getting to look at all the stars well you know there's red stars there's yellow stars there's orange stars they're different glory different glory of different stars of course, those of us that live in the city, you can't really see anything because of all the light from the city light. You can't see it. But you know what? When you're out in the middle of the desert with nothing around and you stop the car and you look up, there's millions of stars. You can't count them all. It's impossible. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living, living soul. The last Adam, and that's Christ, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. 
Now, think about it. Who was the first, you know, Adam, the first one formed from the ground? Who was his father? God, the, God was. The first Adam, he didn't have a mother. He wasn't born. He was formed. He was the first man, Adam. And he was made a living soul when God breathed the breath of life. And what's interesting is in the Greek, the word for wind or breath or air is pneuma, which is where they get the word uh, for pneumatic tools, air tools, spirit, pneuma. It's, you know, it's, I always wondered why the Lord chose Greek for the New Testament. So the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. After all, the last Adam, who was his father? God the Father was his father. Certainly not Joseph, like some of the modern Bible versions try to, they say, and, and uh, Mary and his father Joseph, they try to make, you know, that just totally destroys the virgin birth. That's why I say stick with the King James Bible. So the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, which is Christ, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is nat natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. Verse 47. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. See, and people will try to tell you that Jesus was just a man, uh, a prophet, a good man, you know. No. Paul says, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the Donald Trump. Oh, no, I'm sorry. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last Trump. When's the last Trump mentioned in the Bible? Uh, it's in the book of Revelation. Do you know that there are seven Trumps, seven trumpets that are sounded during the tribulation? And the seventh one is the last one, because there's only seven. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you're in a line with seven people and you're the last one, you'd be the seventh one, right? The seventh one would be the last one. Where's the pre-trib rapture? I, 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 God. I can't find it. Never mind. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last Trump, for the Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump, um, oh, never mind. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. And you know what? That happened on the cross. Verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, 
unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All right, let's go back to 1 John chapter 3. Verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we shall know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. See, the Bible tells you that's this is the definition of sin. Sin is breaking God's laws. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. You see, Christ was no sinner, not one. Do you know if Christ would have broken one of God's laws, sinned once? We'd have no Savior. We'd be without hope. We'd die, and that would be it. Verse 6, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. You see, Christ was righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. You know what the devil is? It's evil. E-V-I-L with a capital D in front of it. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Isn't that interesting? Now, there are people that will tell you, well, you know, when they're talking about the children of the devil, they're talking about a spiritual thing. No, no, uh, you can follow the devil, but believe me, the devils have children. Read Genesis 6 sometime. Go to my playlist. When it says the children of the devil, it's not a metaphor. It's not a figure of speech. It's the real deal. The devils had children. In this little, uh, in this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Isn't that interesting? Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Now, there are people that will tell you that Cain was fathered, I mean, you know, by Adam. And they'll quote Genesis chapter 4. And uh, Adam knew his wife and conceived and bare Cain and Abel. So, not as Cain who was of that wicked one? Well, if Cain was fathered by Abel, that means Abel 
I mean, I'm sorry, Adam, Adam. If Cain was fathered by Adam, this right here says Adam was the wicked one. Was Adam the wicked one? Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Why does it say of? Why doesn't it say like or followed or similar to or, you know? I mean, let's face it. When you're when you go to the bakery and you buy a cake, what is a cake made of? It's made of wheat flour, maybe chocolate, maybe vanilla, sugar, eggs. That's what cakes are made of. They're not like flour. They don't follow eggs. They don't follow chocolate. They're not similar to. That's what cakes are made of of huh not as Cain who was of that wicked one so you've got a choice was Adam the wicked one or is Satan the wicked one verse 13 marvel not my brethren if the world hate you we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whosoever hath this world's good, and seeth his brother hath need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? You know, this is this ties into James chapter 2. James chapter 2 says, Faith without works is dead being alone. You know, <laughs> James said, if you see somebody that's, cold and I'm paraphrasing but you see somebody that's cold and hungry and you send them away empty your faith is in vain you know you got a bowl of stew on the uh, a hot stew on the stove and you got five coats and you haven't worn four of them in five years and you and it's winter and it's cold and you wouldn't hand them a bowl of hot hot stew and, a, and a, a warm coat and you're going to tell everybody how you love the Lord and you got a brother a brother in the faith or a brother in the flesh and you wouldn't give them a, a coat that you're not even going to miss and you'd rather throw food in the garbage than give it to somebody that's hungry and you're going to tell the Lord how much you love him Oh boy. Oh boy. But whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Oh, that's scary. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have the confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. What? There's people who tell you that this is lordship salvation. Ooh, you're earning your salvation. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Hmm. Remember, uh, somebody asked the Lord what the great com uh, commandment was. And Jesus said to love the Lord. 
And he said, the second is like unto that, love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. So when Torah keepers tell you that you got to, you know, not wear cotton with wool clothes and you got to keep the Sabbath and you can only walk a certain distance on a Sabbath day and you got to keep kosher and you got to celebrate Passover and you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to be circumcised and I don't think so. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do that. You know, it's, it's, let's face it, pork is unhealthy. Shrimp, all that stuff. I mean, it's a good idea not to eat that stuff. Pigs are the sewer system of the land. Uh, but, you know, Jesus said it's not what goes into our mouth that defiles us, it's what comes out of our mouth. And I'm an expert on that. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave his commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. All right, James chapter 2, starting in verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works? Can faith save him? You see, you're not saved by your works, but your works are proof of your faith. I mean, let's face it. If you're growing an apple tree and it doesn't produce any apples, what good is it? It's worthless. Chop it down and plant something else. Right? What doth it profit my brother, and though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food. Now, is this a brother or sister in the flesh or in the faith? Take your pick. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye filled and war uh, warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? In other words, you know they're hungry and they're freezing, and you don't give them nothing, what good are you? Verse 17, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. That's right. Works follow faith. First you have faith and your works, what you do is proof of what you believe. Let's face it. If somebody wants to borrow a lot of money and you know for a fact they're never going to pay you back, are you going to lend them the money? No, you have no faith in them. But if you, you know this person and you know they're trustworthy and you know they're, they'll take care of you, of course, you know... You loan them the money if they need it, right? You know, if you love them and care about them, you know. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Even Satan believes in God. You think Satan's saved? Absolutely not. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seeth thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith 
made perfect? And the scripture which was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. And people, I want to be called the friend of God one day. And if you think your works have nothing to do with your faith, I suggest you argue with Jesus. Turn to Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. See, Jesus was the Son of Man and the Son of God. He was both. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. <laughs> you know why the unholy angels are going to be coming with him? Because they were cast out and they're on the earth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations. That word nations there, sometimes that same word in the Greek is translated as Gentiles. But you know what? In this instance, they translated it nations. And before him shall be gathered all Gentiles. And that would, that would you know, it's the same word. Sometimes they translated the same word nations and sometimes Gentiles. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Let me tell you something, people. A goat is born a goat. It doesn't have faith in God and miraculously turn into a sheep. Sheep are born sheep and goats are born goats. That's just the way it is. Verse 33. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Isn't that funny? All, don't all the socialists and communists, and don't they always call themselves um, the left? And then you got the, uh, the conservatives that always say, oh, we're the right wing. And, but the, but the uh, socialists and the Democrats, they're always the left wing. Ha ha ha. You think that's a coincidence? And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, the sheep, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? Or when saw, uh, when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Ooh. You know, if you don't feed those in faith, if you have an abundance, you don't give them drink, you don't take them in when it's cold, you don't clothe them, visit the sick, those in prison. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least, the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. These are the words millions are going to dread. Depart from me, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. 
I was a stranger and you took me not in, naked and you clothed me not, sick and in prison and you visited me not. You still think that your works have nothing to do with your faith? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not, not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Amen to that, people. Well, I think this is going to be the end of part two of Trump. Remember, don't put your faith in Donald Trump. Put your faith in Christ. Things are going to get really, really rough. And I say, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen. And by the way, people, just in case my YouTube channel gets shut down, you can go to BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. Somebody pointed out that it's Bitch U-T-E. I didn't notice that. Somebody pointed that out to me, but that's... I didn't plan that, but uh, they're a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, thing, and it's not centralized like YouTube. So if I ever disappear, I'm on B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E, and all you got to do is type in uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, or Bob Walker. That's all you got to remember, Chaplain Bob. That's it, and uh, you'll find me. So, all right, take care. May the Lord guide us into all truth. Amen.